What do you think that is? Some type of alien communication? <gasps> Maybe it's a sign of the coming apocalypse. We could soon have these tattooed on our foreheads. No. Perhaps it's a sign from a, from a long lost language. This could be a symbol for the letter bzzz. Actually, no, it's none of those things. This is called a QR code, and it's a type of two-dimensional barcode. You'll find these just about everywhere nowadays, from your standard UPC barcode on everyday household items to the lesser-known variety on UPS and FedEx packages. Um, these codes are generally used for tracking, shipping, and indexing, but they can also be used for... other purposes. Today, we're going to go over the basics of what will henceforth be known as glyph tagging, an advanced and unusual way to deliver information and messages. To start off, I'm going to go over a handful of different types of two-dimensional barcodes, as well as some programs to decode them, because without that, you have a bunch of meaningless crap on a piece of paper. You might as well just wipe your butt and stick it to the wall. Uh, I only have a Windows mobile device to work with, as usual. But there are applications available for other platforms. Fox and Mustang both have G1s, and they're able to decode and scan QR codes uh, through... There's a bunch of different programs out there, but the ones that they use are BTAG and ScanLife, I believe. I'll mention those in the show notes, but I haven't had much chance to use them. Uh, after that, we're, I'm going to go over the computer side and show you how to create your own glyph tags. Then we're going to join Fox in the city, and he's going to show you some good strategic locations to place them. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to my friend, and we're going to get started. I'd now like to introduce you to my quiet and faithful helping hand, Richard. Say hello, Richard. Good day to you all. I'd just like to say how much of an honor this is, and I'm so happy to be here, and I just... Ri Richard. Sorry. Richard's going to take each of the codes and put them on the background, and then scan them with my phone as I explain them. Isn't that right, Richard? That's correct. All right, get the first code. Which one? The, the one that looks like a code. Oh, that's it. All right. This is a data matrix code. It looks very similar to a QR code, but it's different. Oh. Richard. Richard, get the phone. Oh, sorry. First off, he's going to be showing you Enigma. Put it in your mouth. I do not want to put that in my mouth. Put it in your mouth! Now once it loads up, it's really just a matter of getting the camera in focus with it. And it makes an obnoxiously loud sound, and there you go. This is a data matrix code. <laughs> Not very difficult. Alright, get the next one. Alright, next he's going to show you a QR code, which you've seen already. Get the phone! Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm doing this. And There you go. This is a QR code. Put it down. Get the other one. Son of a bitch! Now get the phone. I don't know where it is. Just here. Alright. Now he's going to start up quick mark. And this is a quick mark code. Quick mark. Obviously, it says this is a quick mark code. All right, you're done. Go away. But I didn't want to just go away. You, you treat me like crap. I'm leaving you. All right. So now that you've seen the basic types of data matrix codes, we're going to go on to how to use them. Going over the computer side. That was completely out of hand. You treated me like crap. I'm not taking this anymore. I'm leaving. Richard, will you shut up? I'm on the computer trying to record a sec. Uh, okay, this is QR code.kwa.com. That's K A W A.com. As you can see, it's just a simple QR code generator. You can put in a URL, text, phone number, SMS, whatever. So we're just going to put in some text and then choose the size and just click generate. That's it. There's a the QR code. Um, same goes for data matrix codes, only the URL is datamatrix.kwood.com. And same, same layout and everything, only 
different it generates a different type of code. There you go. So that's data matrix. Uh, to create a actual QuickMark code, the proprietary one, you have to go to the QuickMark website, which is quickmark.cn, I believe. Okay, this is the QuickMark website. And to generate one of their proprietary codes, you go to QuickMark DIY. And uh, the first option it gives you is to put in a URL. So we'll just do the BSOD URL. And there it is. That's that's the actual code there. And there's a bunch of different options for downloading it and such. Gives you the option to download it, obviously. Now, what I like about their site is that you can actually choose different options here. You can, you know, phone call, SMS. It just gives you a lot of different uh, options. You can even do geographical coordinates. It's it's nice. You can just put it right in. Uh, it is their proprietary format, so you need to use QuickMark with it. But you know, I mean, when it comes down to it, you're just putting text into the code. So we're going to go over to Fox now, and he's out in the field, and he's going to show us some different locations and good spots to put them. Richard, what the crap are you doing? Put the knife down. I'm going to... Uh, uh. All right. Now, whenever you decide to go out and do any kind of glyph tagging, I'm in an urban environment. So the codes need to be of a relatively decent size and visible. This is actually the reader to my bank, and I've got a nice size QR code. All of my codes have actually been sitting out for about six months. Um, I really didn't do much of a job putting them in there. I just kind of slapped them on. Now, right now, I'm using BTAG for the G1. Now, if you make these codes too big or too small, the application will have a hard time reading them. As you can see, the G1 is actually having a really hard time with this. So this code is actually containing too much information. Now, there are other applications that work a bit better. Let me get out the, oh, hey, look at that. It did work. Go to web. You picking that up? All right, let's try that. Oh, and brings up website. Or should. Oh, server application. Well, point being is um, location, location, location. That code's actually been there for about six months, like I've mentioned. All of my QR codes that I put in the area before we even recorded this segment, I was doing some uh, experiments, have been put up six months ago. Now, I actually tried to put one right here. You can still see the remnants of all the sticker and whatnot. This was ripped down in about 48 hours. So, yeah, it's kind of funny that I put a QR code that has a very uh, horrible remark, if you actually can decode it, right next to the card reader of my bank, and it's been there, but I put one right next to a payphone, ripped down in 24 hours. Let's go to a couple more QR codes that I put up in the area. All right, another location. This is actually a bad job. This QR code is too small, and it's up too high. Now, granted, it's in a nice location where no one will actually notice to rip it down, but because of its size, it's really hard to read unless you can actually get your scanner way up high, and it's just really hard to get it to focus in and work. Yeah. As you notice, this was just a really stupid idea on my part, but again, this is still in beta. Getting the right location where to put your codes is really the, uh, the art to this. Now, uh, I'll show you another location. I decided to put up a QR code that was actually ripped down in less than an hour. Wait till the ambulance goes by. Okay, now I actually had a QR code right here. It was ripped down in an hour. Yeah, not a good idea. Mailboxes, fuck them. Next location. All right, most places that you'd normally see some kind of advertising or flyers or whatnot are typically a bad idea, primarily because people are gonna go and put their flyers over your QR codes. If you put them nice and low down to the ground down here, they typically don't get removed. People don't even notice them. But you know what, we need to have like some kind of official place that we should put default uh, glyph tags. So uh, let's go to the next location where I have a couple more tags up and uh, we'll see how well those worked out over time. 
Okay, I gotta do this one quick because I got people coming. I'm currently standing in front of a cable TV distribution box. This is also for cable ISPs. Now, I've got a little QR code down here. It's a little bit warped because it wasn't protected properly. I'm having a hard time, uh... Yeah, I... You know, the G1 actually decoded it as, uh... Take a fucking picture, it'll last longer. Uh, iNigma on my wing has a bit of a problem, primarily because it's a crappy camera. So really, it's, your device determines how well you can actually pick up QR codes. But putting things on utility boxes would be a good idea, mainly because it's utility boxes. Granted, it's full of graffiti and other all that junk. People just pass it, and they really don't put advertising on it. They don't put anything else on it besides just graffiti. And no one's really done anything to this tag besides weather itself. Let's go to one more location, which is actually was a pretty stupid idea on my part. Let's go. All right, I figured two locations for unofficial or official locations for any kind of uh, glyph tagging should be utility boxes or street signs, primarily because they're rarely vandalized. I've actually got a QR code all the way up there. I'm a total idiot because I actually have to climb the pole to put it up there, and it's way too small. There's absolutely no way to read it. So learn from my mistakes, people. Now, the whole idea behind glyph tagging is so you can actually put any kind of information in your environment in plain sight, and only people available to this information will be able to actually decode it. And it's a really good idea. I mean, right over here, I can actually put uh, uh, war chalking symbols on the ground, but they'll wash away. So in this case, I can go and put a glyph, co a glyph code anywhere containing any kind of information, GPS coordinates, applicable for geocaching, applicable for war driving, or even if you just want to tell someone there's a really great place for beers and burgers on a Friday night. So uh, glyph tagging, the only catch-22 is how are you going to have a mobile printing setup? Now, maybe some clever coders for the G1 or Windows Mobile can actually create something where you can actually save the code, or you can just save the information, you bring it home, print it out, and put it someplace else. It's all really a matter of how creative are you. So, glyph tagging. Get into it, fuckers.